Hi folks, this is Dad. Welcome back to the bar. Uh, today I'm going to get a little crazy and I'm going to mix things up and I'm going to bring a Canadian whiskey, okay? Uh, this is a Canadian whiskey that I found while on vacation. Caribou Crossing, okay? And uh, it is really cool and it reminds me of a bottle that was the first bottle that ever sent me off into bourbon lust and uh, let's set this right here lanterns single barrel okay now as you can tell they look oddly similar now i wasn't even a bourbon hunter when i found this um originally i i was just kind of aspiring to one day uh collect bourbons and I was at my local Albertsons and I saw this for $67 and like 58 cents. And I said, I want that. I went home and I told my wife, babe, for my birthday, can we get this bottle of Blanton's that I saw at the Albertsons? And she said, yes. So a couple of, about a week and a half later, I go back, it's gone. I get the guy out of the back room and he says, you'll never see that again. Um, that was a mistake. It shouldn't have been here. Uh, we sell things at MSRP, and none of that made any sense to me. And he goes, it's an allocated thing, and I, that didn't mean anything to me. But over time, I, I do know. Well, anyway, um, so while looking for this bottle over the next six years, um, I came across people saying it's not worth the hunt, not worth the hype. Well, over time, you'd see people saying, oh, try this instead, try this instead. This came up, Caribou Crossing, as the Canadian Blantons. And as we know, if it's Canadian, it can't be bourbon. Well, let's look into this real quick, shall we? Okay, I'm going to set this down. Caribou Crossing is the world's first single barrel Canadian whiskey by the Sazerac Company. Okay, that's pretty cool. So up in Canada, um, it is uh, taken care of up there. Uh, aged in what was uh, assumed as uh, former bourbon barrels um, for three years. It's really cold up there, guys, and the atmospheric pressure is way different, okay? So it kind of comes off sweet. Um, and uh, most Canadian whiskeys are uh, corn, bourbon, and rye with 15% of the rye, okay? Um, so... That being said, this will never fall down as a bourbon, but the thing that, for me, that, that made it interesting was Sazerac. Right there. Okay. So it is Sazerac Company bottled three or twice a year, uh, spring and fall, bottled in the Blanton's, not Blanton's, um, a Buffalo Trace Distilling Company. So, same place this is. But this is done in a different room. Yeah, a single barrel room, where it has a short pipe and the Eagle Rare has the twice as long a pipe, so it can't be considered single barrel anymore. So it is now small batch, but Eagle Rare runs through the same vein as this. Um, but not this, most likely, no, not at all. But Caribou Crossing. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to try and, and uh, give off the same vibe as something, that's kind of an Elmer T. Lee vibe with the Blanton's top kind of vibe. Oh, shout out to Express Liquor and Wine in Yakima, Washington off of Fair Avenue. Uh, they're the reason I found this. This is their store pick. Um, shout out to those guys. Wonderful people. I walked in. I was in there for about three seconds, and they... They came over and they asked me, I, I believe it's either the manager or the owner, came over and asked me, how could they help me? The second I pointed this out, they realized I knew something when I said the Canadian Blantons. They're like, hey, let's let's talk for a second. MSRP. It was like 50 some dollars plus uh, uh, Washington State liquor tax, uh, whatever, whatever, which is pretty hefty if you ask me. Um, but look at that. Look at the little tabs in the back, they're the same. Uh, the platforms look like they were made out of the same shop. Um, pretty awesome, if you ask me. I have my second bottle on the way, by the way. Um, 
my brother-in-law is uh, going out and grabbing it from uh, from them also. Express wine and liquor. Liquor and wine. All right, so let's put this down here for a second. So the question comes as to why did I find Caribou Crossing? Well, because Blanton's is so hard to find. And every time you turn around, somebody says something about Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, or... Uh, Colonel E. Hyde Taylor being uh, hard to find, and and then somebody has to make a video, and I'm not putting them down. Content is content is content, and I've I've watched that content, so you know and I know what comes next. Is it worth the hunt? Is it worth the hype? Videos. I want to talk to you real quick, okay, folks. I found um, Caribou Crossing because. My second bottle of Blanton's, I would really like to find that at MSRP. <laughs> Me and every other guy and gal. But is it going to happen? My first bottle of Weller's, I paid $100 for it to get it to my house. And I'm going to be somewhere in about two and a half weeks where it's just readily available on any given Saturday for MSRP. Different markets have different sway, different values, and different uh, reasons for what they do. But um, Evan Williams Single Barrel, I believe you're only going to find that in Kentucky. Um, I, I have to look into that. But there's uh, certain things that you can only find in certain places. And so people say, is it worth the hunt, worth the hype? Um, yes, for if, if, if you go on a two-tier system, are you looking at at what's inside the bottle or are you looking for the historical value or are you looking for both of those so i'll tell you what um eagle rare was created to battle wild turkey 101 so historically speaking buffalo trace was going after uh wild turkey's uh footing because wild turkey at that time was boasting an eight-year age statement now if they still are today i still need to find that out but in August, I'll be in a place where I might be able to get an age statement Wild Turkey 101 bottle. I'll try my best. Um, but anyway, E. High Taylor, you're one of the big boys here. Let's go up front. Okay. All right. E. High, Basil, the old granddad, Elijah Craig, Oak Dank. And Evan Williams. Okay. So I'm going to start right here. Evan Williams is the, one of the first um, bourbons. Bourbon bourbon. Okay. Let's see. Evan Williams set up his distillery on the banks of the Ohio River in 18, uh, 1783 and is historically recognized as Kentucky's first distiller of bourbon. This is bottled and bond. Now, bottled and bond, remember that. That means that it's 100 proof and it has to meet the regulations. This guy, Colonel E. High Taylor of the Sazerac, uh, um, uh, Buffalo Trace, and now, I guess, uh, worldly known, worldwide known by ancient age. Um, owns that all or is marketed through all that. But he went to Congress and said, we need to have standards. And with his help, this old boy right here, with his help, um, historically speaking, Bottled and Bond came out. And now we have Evan Williams Bottled and Bond, which is considered one of the finest there is for its price range. Um, and I believe you can get this for $20, a half gallon. And so this was about $100 for me, $115. Um, but this is beautiful to me. And it's a great 100 proof. My God. So putting the history, the historical value into it, is it worth the hunt? Yes, to me. All right. So this guy, Basil Hayden, I picked this up. This is probably my second bottle that I picked up. It's seen better days. But the presentation of it made me just flip out. And I know that old granddad over here, this guy is the picture right there. That's Basil on old granddad 114, okay? And he's one of the reasons why Jim Beam became what it is and Knob Creek 9, Knob Creek 12, Knob Creek 15 are some of my favorite things ever because of this guy. 
Okay, let's put them back. Now, we were already talked about Evan, so let's pop Evan back here. Now let's go to Elijah here. <laughs> Historically speaking, this is the first guy to ever put uh, toasted barrels to give it that color, to give it some of that flavor, to give it some of that sweetness, uh, to, to take away from some of that tanniny um, bite that uh, Virginia new oak barrels can give you. And uh, the thing about this guy is, is thanks to him, we have what we have. And um, it is what it is. It starts from there. So historically speaking, if you are hunting down bourbons for reasons of historical value, not just unicorn, a guy on a video set, um, what's inside? of a Blanton's bottle. Is it as good as say Elijah Craig or uh, uh, let's say um, Old Forester or Weller 107 uh, or Four Roses Single Barrel or Russell's Reserve Tenure or Rare Breed or Well Turkey 101, that's subjective. It's up to the drinker. To me, some of the finest things up here are very different from each other. And some of the best things I've ever had changes on a yearly basis. Um, right now, I'll tell you what, um, right now, to me, Maker's Mark Private Selection is right up there with some of the best things I could drink. And then I could turn around and I could have some Woodford Reserve Double Oak and go, that's some of the finest thing I've ever had. And then a week later, my friend will come over and Wild Turkey 101 hits me. And then we'll hit the rare breed and I just lose my pants. And then if I feel like banana, old taffy, I go to Old Forester. And that taffy that your grandma used to give you back when you'd go to her house when you were up to her knee and, and it was banana flavor and that probably wasn't your favorite flavor at that time. And now when you're drinking Old Forester 86, and I'm going to get the 100 proof, but that hits you like, like, what in the world are you doing? So I say to you folks, all of these things are subjective. If, if you're looking at the historical value of things, is there a better single barrel? Yes. But don't you want the first one if you're a collector? Don't you? Like, I want Elijah Craig barrel proof if I could find one. I want Evan Williams Barrel proof if I can find one. I've got Jack Daniels barrel proof right here. I'm going to get a big boy and then we're going to drink that. Um, is barrel proof better? No, but I like that. That's in my wheelhouse. That's what I like. I like I like my uh, old Forester 1920 at 115. I like old granddad. I like that dusty penis hitting me at a higher proof. I like my 1792 small batch. That really does it for me. Um, but I'll tell you what, folks. Let's remember, stay in your budget. And there's wild things to drink in your budget. And your budget, if you work on it, will go up. It'll increase. I'm not telling you to stop eating protein and eat ramen so that you can have a bottle of booze to destroy your liver. But, like, I'm going on vacation to see some family. I checked some liquor stores before. I bought my ticket so that I would know what airport to fly into so that I can make the right path home so that when I do my visit, I can stop off at a couple stores and get that MSRP. I'm going to get a bottle of Wellers for $35. They got a half gallon for like uh, 50. I'm going to get a bottle of Knob Creek 9, a half gallon for $60 plus tax. And that's probably all I'll be able to bring, bring back. But if I can find a Jack Daniels over there, you know, a couple uh uh, bottled in bond or a couple triple mash uh, at MSRP without that Washington state tax that I got to put myself through, I'm doing it. Save myself $12 a bottle, maybe. But the fact of it is, folks, is that when you get into this, if somebody tells you, is it worth the hunt, worth the hype? God, beware that video because it is up to you. 
I got a lot of people tell me don't buy a single alcohol off of Costco because it's not the representative of what you really think it is. And I say to them for the price, it's representative of what it is. Not what I think it is. And what it is, is usually not so bad for what you pay. Now, if you think you're going to go get some some Bartons from uh, Costco that's going to be just as good as $17.92, I, I, I assure you it is not. I assure you that. But are you going there looking for that, for the price? Getting a big old bottle this big for half the price of what you pay a normal one? You really thinking you're that slick just because you got a membership to Costco? I mean, let's be realistic. But some of these bottles up here, when you see them and you pass by and they're really uh, at that price point that you're looking for, then, then, then that's well worth the value to you. Um, my, bottles of, my bottle of Blanton's, is it worth it to me? Haven't even opened it yet, but it is. Just to hold it. So, I tell you what. This is his dad saying, it's a goofy thing to ask if something is worth the hunt, worth the hype, if you don't make the distinction that uh, it is totally up to the person each time to decide that for themselves. So anyway, this is his dad saying, I absolutely love you. And I can't wait to uh, get my second bottle of Caribou Crossing um, so that we can do that, that opening. Plus, uh, I'm going to get a full bottle of uh, full proof so that we can open up one of the 350s, okay? This is his dad saying, I love you and, and stay safe until the next time. Please drink responsibly. And if you're in America, 21 means 21. I love you. Bye-bye.